A letter to my soon-to-be ex-wife. My kids and I reread the letter again, and it seemed to say everything we wanted it to say. My teenage children hugged me. My daughter was the first to look up at me. Do you think, Daddy, she'll make the right choice? She asked thoughtfully. I frowned. I hope so for all our sakes. My son looked at us. It's unlikely, he said sadly. Well, who knows? Your mother may come to her senses, I said without much conviction. Having said that, we packed our bags and suitcases and went to our house by the sea. We were going there for the weekend, so now it's just going to be a move? We'll see. The cameras in the house were set up to see everything that was going on. You can watch the broadcast on my phone. Two hours later, as we were unpacking our stuff, my phone alerted me that there was someone in the house, more specifically in the kitchen. The alarm went off, and the remote camera came to life. We saw my wife alone reading an email, and then we saw her fall to the floor, writing, to my soon-to-be ex-wife, even though things have been tough the last year or so because of money and our problems, I'd like to think we had each other's backs, but I guess I was wrong. Our kids have been telling me for some time now how very distracted you've been. Honestly, I was so busy looking after the kids and fixing all the problems at work that I'll admit I took my eye off the ball and should have noticed something was wrong. Your family also saw how distracted you were at our last family barbecue. Heck, everyone kept looking at you, but you ignored us all. You just focused on cooking in your phone. Your dad kept asking me what was going on. Honestly, I didn't have an answer. Then when I tried to talk to you, it was like talking to a brick wall. Your sister talked to me privately, and she told me about a man at work, a man you seem to be happily involved with, much younger and fitter. You don't talk to your kids. You don't talk to your parents. Heck, even my parents are worried about you. I know my mother tried to talk to you, but no response. Right now I'm away with my kids. I'm combining vacation and business trip. The kids understand what I'm doing. The deal I'm working on is very important to all of us. It guarantees our financial future, which in turn guarantees that we can do whatever we want to do, that is, fulfill all the promises. However, the kids are old enough to realize that this is where our paths may part. 25 years ago you said yes when I asked you to marry me. Since that day I have loved you with everything I have. I know sometimes I don't always put it well, but I want to tell you here and now, my love for you is absolute. However, if you do something stupid and break your vows, cross a line that you can't go back after, then it's over between us. So it is your choice, you remain faithful, and we will discuss everything and find out exactly what you want in our marriage, but whatever you decide, the only requirement, my absolute requirement, is fidelity. If you can't agree to that, it's over between us. I've already drawn up the papers. It's up to you. Do what your heart tells you to do, and damn it, don't think with your body. I know you have a date with your boyfriend. If you make love to him, then your entire family will be notified of our divorce. And yes, I will explain to them why. I will tell everyone we know why we are divorcing. Well, it's in your hands now. I hope you pull your head out of your ass and dump your boyfriend. But like I said, if you sleep with him, you'll ruin our marriage. Okay? Well, it's your choice. Choose wisely. Just so you know, I'm going to track down your boyfriend and tell him in no uncertain terms to go away. And if he doesn't, he'll regret seducing a married woman. I won't admit to anything, but he may not be as handsome after I'm done with him. Your husband and kids. I was a little stunned at first. This wasn't supposed to happen. Expecting my wife to faint was not part of my plan. I watched for a few more minutes and finally my wife moved and sat up, then she slowly stood up, and I could see tears streaming down her face. She picked up the letter again and reread it one more time. She seemed to shake herself up, then she started screaming loudly at herself. What a stupid, you stupid, you stupid fool. She looked around the kitchen, and when she saw my wedding ring on the table, she screamed in pain. What have I done? I'm so stupid, I hope it's not too late. She continued to berate herself. 
Just then, the doorbell rang. She turned and walked from the kitchen to the front door. On the way, passing our set of carving knives, she picked up the largest of them and headed into the hallway. The camera in the hallway started recording. I saw my wife open the door and a young man, probably in his early twenties, staggered through the door. He regained his balance and opened his arms. Bibi, now I'm here. Where's your hubby? My wife walked up to him and put a knife to his throat. You have no idea what you've done. You've ruined my marriage and it looks like most of my family will disown me. I was fucking stupid. I fell for your pressure. I almost believed I had the right to sleep with you. I'm so stupid. I bet everyone at work is laughing their asses off. He had a look of horror on his face. He had come to make love to her, yet now he was facing the devilous. Thank the hell out of me for only kissing you. When my husband speaks to me again as a husband or ex-husband, I will tell him how you tried to convince me I needed you. I'll tell him it took you a year to finally convince me to sleep with you. Just once. He stepped forward trying to push her away, but instead my wife drove the blade even deeper into his throat. I could see a trickle of blood running down the blade. You asshole. I have nothing to lose now. My life is over, so cutting your throat will be very satisfying. When you bleed out, I'll cut your balls off so you can go to hell as a eunuch. Now back away slowly, open the door and walk away, and never come near me at work or anywhere else. He slowly stepped back, opened the door with a trembling hand, turned and almost ran down the driveway. I saw the door slam and then my wife slumped against the door. Tears were streaming down her face. Then she stood up abruptly and seemed to notice that she was wearing an evening gown that I hadn't bought her. She cut the dress open with a knife. Leaving herself in the lacy black lingerie I had bought her, she ran upstairs. The bedroom camera turned on. She went to my closet and picked out the shirt she bought for me. She put it on, then went to her closet. She put on a pair of old jeans. Then she started making phone calls. My phone rang, and of course it was my wife. Yes, Carol, what can I do for you? I said without emotion. Gary, I know you saw him in the house. I know you saw me almost kill him. And Gary, God knows I'd love to slit his throat. There was a manic note in her voice. Carol listened to me carefully. Our children don't want their mother in jail, and they don't want me in jail either. Now I can see you're not thinking straight, so I'm going to tell you what to do. You're going to contact all of our families, and you're going to apologize to them for being a fool for a year now. Gary, yes. Of course I will. Gary, I'm sorry. I'm such an idiot. You know I wasn't in love with him, you know? If I thought for a moment that you did make love to him, we wouldn't be having this conversation, I said in a strained voice. Now do as I say. Contact everyone we know and apologize to them and tell them exactly why we are not together. I want everyone to know how stupid you are. Yeah, Gary, I'll do what you said. Gary, just so you know, I do love you, and if you want a divorce, I won't resist. It's the least I can do, but please don't cut me out of your life. She disconnected the call and then called her family, then my family, then her co-workers, then our friends. My phone went into a frenzy. Twenty messages from friends and family, texts from my wife's work colleagues and various people I had no idea who they were. But the gist of the messages was what an idiot my wife was and how could she do this? My wife looked absolutely shattered. It seemed like every person she talked to was hitting her over the head. Eventually, she just laid down and I could see that she was motionless. I zoomed in and could see her breasts rising and falling. I sent a text to her phone. Don't die. Take care of yourself. When you get some rest, pack a bag and come here. We need to talk. At the same time, I texted a friend from Eastern Europe. He was a bit rough but very loyal and had friends in the darker strata of society. The message said, yes, make him disappear. After he read the message, I deleted the message and all traces of him from my phone. 
Only my friend and I knew that I had sent the message. The meaning of the text is clear enough. Carol arrived three hours later. She looked tired and sad, but was otherwise fine. When she got out of the car, the kids ran up to her and hugged her. Mommy, thank you for finally choosing us. We've all missed you, even Daddy. But he won't admit it, said Alice, our daughter, while glancing at me. Our son Martin hesitated for a moment and then looked at me. I nodded. He walked over to his mom and hugged her awkwardly, then pulled back. Mom, it's good to have you here. Admittedly, we didn't expect you to threaten your boyfriend, he said with a smile. Carol didn't know what to say. She looked at me and opened her arms. I hesitated for a moment and saw the pain on her face. Daddy, you won't catch an STD from hugging, Alice said with a smile. Of course she was right. I stepped forward and hugged my wife, maybe for the last time, and she clung to me and repeated, I'm so sorry, I'm sorry, over and over again. Eventually we let each other go. Martin picked up Carol's suitcase. He turned to me. Dad, which room? The spare room. I'm sorry, Carol, I can't be with you at the moment knowing you were with that asshole, I said, trying to be calm. Gary, I know you don't trust me, but I never had a love affair with him, she said sincerely. I want to believe you, but it's been a year since you've been with me. Mentally, you've left all of us, our friends and families behind. So until you show me a health certificate, you're sleeping in the spare room. Just so you know, you can't just show up and come back into our lives just because you threatened your boyfriend. I need more proof from you that you're the woman I married. Gary, I'm so sorry. Is there no hope for us? Tears were streaming down her face. We have very little chance at this point. I'm sorry, Carol. But it's up to you. I turned and headed into the house, then walked into the study and closed the door. I closed my eyes and tried to organize my thoughts. One of the main problems was the lack of information. But tonight I would find out everything. It would allow me to choose one path or the other. I woke up to the smell of bacon, eggs, and fried bread. I stood up and stretched. I checked my phone. There were many messages and voicemails, most of them approving of my actions, but one or two urging me to forgive my wife. Then I saw a series of messages from an unknown number. The messages were clear. No love with your wife. They only had kissing. Only touched her outerwear. Sometimes touched her bra. No love, just wanted to sleep with her. He made love to other married women and enjoyed it. Your wife was the only one he didn't sleep with. She kept saying no. That asshole will never make love to a woman again. His tool is gone. It started six months ago, before that who knows. Ask your wife. My advice? If you still love her, stay with her. Just my advice. I'll keep an eye on her for six months and then I'll stop. Good luck. I read the messages carefully and replied, thanks. Good job. With my phone in my pocket, I went into the kitchen, my wife and kids looking at me. Carol, we need to talk. This is long overdue. I should have sat you down and yelled at you a year ago. But it's easy to talk now, isn't it? The tears on her face reflected hope and fear. Carol, I'm giving you a free get-out-of-jail-free card, but you have to earn it. You will be the best daughter to your parents. You will be the best daughter-in-law to my parents. You will be the best friend to our mutual friends. And you will be diligent at work. Last but most importantly, you'll be the best mother to our kids. You'll be the one to take them to soccer practice, you'll take them to parties, and you'll be supportive in problem situations. Basically, you'll make up for all the trouble we've been through over the last year because of your emotional affair with that jerk. By the way, don't worry about him. He's not your concern anymore. Carol looked shocked for a moment. Gary, I don't know what to say. I really was a fool. I took bad advice and was lied to. I'm also obviously very gullible. 
But if you give me a chance, I'll prove to you and everyone else that I'm not a hopeless case. She stood up, hugged me, and then stepped back. I love you, Gary. I always have and always will, and I will prove my love to you until the day I die. Martin coughed. Daddy, take mommy upstairs and show her who's boss. My girlfriend likes it when I take control, he said, and laughed. I grabbed my wife's hand and dragged her upstairs. I was in control and did show her who was in charge. However, I had my defenses on. It's been two weeks, and Carol continues to show everyone, my family, her family, her co-workers, our children, and especially me, that she is worthy of forgiveness. Well, as for me, basically, I romantically make love to her every night and almost every morning before I leave for work. We go out to restaurants and bars. She dresses well but never acts swaggering. She rejects any male attention. Her phone is always on. Her tracker is always on. She tells me where she's going, even if it's with family or mutual friends. We go out as a couple or family. She never goes out alone. It's her choice, not mine. She gives herself to me as I like. However, I am not hard and only make love to her if she wants and participates. Oh, and the doctor who tested her for STDs did ask about her love life and other lovers. I was there when she grabbed my hand and said, this is my husband and my lover. No one else will ever compare to this man. He is my life. I almost threw him away, and now, until I die of old age, all of me belongs to him and him alone. The doctor just smirked and shook my hand. Oh, and yes, Carol's potential boyfriend disappeared. No one was really looking for him. Apparently several husbands divorced their wives because of him, and well, the police weren't too hard on him since one of the affected husbands was an active police officer. Did he die a slow, agonizing death? No, he didn't die. He is disfigured and gutless. He is shunned wherever he goes. His life is a living hell. Do I trust Carol? Hell no. Do I love her? Yes. Does she make up for being a fool for a year? Hell yes. Now life in our house is never boring. Our kids are growing up fast and they have their own partners, but they still hang out with us. So justice has finally been served. The End